The governments have just spent way too much money. Even the Federal Reserve doesn't know what to do. Like, they'll never get to 2%. I've told you guys this. I said it every single day. The Federal Reserve will never get to 2%. And I'm going to show you why right now. Let's break it down. Welcome. My name is Samuel James Price. I'm the Crypto Lifer. And every single week, I give you a weekly macro analysis for Bitcoin. Total. Total 3. The DXY. Tether dominance. Bitcoin dominance. S&P futures. And NASDAQ. I also have... Another cool little special for you too. I'm going to tell you at the end, but it's a pair you definitely don't want to miss. And it looks like it's about to break out again. I'm just saying, money flows from Bitcoin back into the altcoins. You may want to see this pair. I'm going to break it down for you. So let's break it down. Shout out to everybody here. Bitcoin, if you're in my trading group, I was long. Let's talk about why I was long. Even if you watched me last week, you could see that I was talking about certain micro ideas. That broke out right there. The symmetrical triangle to the upside right away. Shoulder, shoulder, head, shoulder, shoulder. It was an inverted head and shoulder. Complex inverted, actually. We also were above moving averages, above a point of control on the on the VRVP. A lot there. A lot there. However, I was using that eight-hour time frame in the 200 SMA. Whenever we got above this 200 SMA and we got tighter and tighter in the zone, you knew Bitcoin was getting ready for a massive move. It was getting tighter and tighter and tighter and tighter. It told us that a massive move was coming for Bitcoin We were about to get some fireworks for BTC. So only a matter of time, we were going to see that rip. And boy, did we get the rip. So if you watch me, I kept going over this. And we started with the weekly. And I kept telling you every single week that we did this. One, two, three. I keep doing this every week. And I kept telling you, as long as we close a weekly candle above this line, which was 41,375, expect to stay to the upside, right? Like I said, we can't be bearish unless we close a candle lower than this. And we didn't. So I couldn't be bearish. I kept telling you that we had to remain bullish. I said this last week. Here we are again now. Amazing. Bullish engulfing candle. The weekly absolutely blew, uh, you know, came out. And, it, and then it broke above this resistance too. So now we have support for Bitcoin at 44000 too. As long as we stay above 44000 it's just off to the races to fifty and to sixty k. So, so far, so good for Bitcoin. Those two areas are holding us down. And you could even make them what's called a bullish rectangle. And the bullish rectangle broke to the upside. It has a measured move, the length of the whole pole. And that tells me we could likely get all the way to 63,389, right? 63,891, sorry. 63,891. Need my glasses. Didn't want to wear my glasses today. You know, I wanted to be cool, right? Anyway, hey, it's cool to wear glasses. I don't know what I'm saying, but I just didn't wear the glasses for the day. Anyway, so we got all the way up here. You know, that, that's the, basically your measured move somewhere to 63K. Unbelievable if that continues. And there's not a lot of resistance on the weekly. There's not a lot of resistance. You know, we got 46, we got 51,005. And then we got a key area there at about, we got 51,005 and we got a key area at 46,800. And so I'm just looking for Bitcoin to kind of slowly work its way on out of here. We got the golden cross. Very, 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 very bullish. The five-day chart just is about to get a golden cross too. It's curving up on the stochastic RSI. It's getting ready for a possible another leg up. To me, lack of bearish momentum in the MACD suggested Bitcoin is going to continue. Right now, we have double topped at resistance. We must break above this to remain bullish. If Bitcoin can't break above it, it is a double top. We may come all the way back down and revisit this area, you know? So I'm open-minded. The daily, very overbought, also at a resistance saying, hey, we might have to pull back. So when it comes to the daily, we made that beautiful move out of the symmetrical triangle. And now it's kind of what is what, right? So we broke out. To me, I'm watching the smallest time frame. So it comes down to this. If we start to roll over on the 15 minute, we're likely to go go lower, right? So I'm tonight on Friday night, I watch this 15 minute time frame and see if it can kind of stay in some type of flag. It doesn't look likely. It looks like shoulder head, right shoulder. It's looking like it's going to break down. We got some bearish div here too as well. Smaller time frames are likely to break down all the way to this 200 SMA. If we lose this here, you come down and then that's going to be what's likely a pullback on the four-hour time frame. If you look at the four hours so far, though, we're above support. So here's the deal. Just like the weekly, as long as the four-hour can stay above this support zone, we're good to go. What I do, what, what, what does have to happen is the four-hour does have to come back to this 200 SMA. So I would flag out both of these like such. There's a chance we just keep going sideways. But because we're so far from the 21, it is more likely that price action does probably come back down here and test the 21 Maybe come right back down here to 45,000. So that's going to be a key area I'd watch is 45,383. If I missed out on Bitcoin and wasn't able to get back in and I was saying, hey, I wish I had bought more, 
Uh, the level right here at 45383 and then if you're lucky enough to get it, 44100 But those are the two levels I'd be looking at for a pullback. It doesn't look like you're going to get a huge, huge pullback. So, And there's a chance we never go lower than 40... Uh, and there's a chance we never go lower than 46800 and we stay above it. So as long as we stay above 46800 uh, we're, we're going to make a, a basically a really nice bullish flag to the upside. So I'm overall more bullish on Bitcoin as long as we stay above 46800 and uh, the weekly candle is going to close absolutely beautiful this week. So everything's looking absolutely lovely. Um, I, we could get a pullback next week. But remember, just keep, you know, watch these key areas. If we do get a pullback, I'm looking for it to do something like this on the four-hour time frame. And that's your macro analysis for Bitcoin looking absolutely lovely. And I'm super excited to see what could happen next week. And if you were watching this every single week, you were at the right place at the right time. And you made massive, massive gains. Let's look at the total market cap in all of cryptocurrency. Last week, we were talking about this flag. We needed this flag to break on out. All right, we got it. Today's the ninth, so we were with you just on the second, and we were dragging out this flag, and we said, as long as this can curve up, we're in a good, you know, and even the daily had legs. I kept looking at the eight-hour time frame. The eight-hour kept saying that there could be a nice move to the upside. Let's get rid of everything else, get rid of the moving averages and clear this out. But again, because Bitcoin moved, but look, you had the shoulder, shoulder, head, shoulder, shoulder, the complex head and shoulder as well, just played out the way is exactly like it was supposed to. I mean, so beautiful. Everything played out exactly like it was supposed to. The TA works out so well. No stop loss with the stop below the right shoulder, and this thing just mooned to the upside like you wouldn't believe. So unbelievable to see Total doing that. Let's take a look at Total on the weekly and look at our big areas of concern and what we have to pay attention to. So we blasted through the resistance. Awesome. Uh, then we played games around here, but we definitely got above this previous resistance, this chop here, and we use that as support. We got some nice support at $1.47 trillion. We have a resistance at 2.16. That's going to be, you know, that's like our over and achieving level. And then we're kind of toying with this level right here. I'm going to put a, a line right there. We hit it exactly. We bounced right there, and we had a little bit of chop. That's going to be the level of 1.7 seven six of course the 77 is going to be there so what do i see happening for bitcoin well the weekly looks i mean for for the total market cap well the weekly looks great that's bullish engulfing telling us there's more to come the five days just getting started so i really look at this as just like a little flag that came down to retest and i wouldn't be surprised if this thing just continued we are at a resistance and we could be making an m pattern but it's just very unlikely when the stokes are this low and curving to the upside with lack of bearish momentum in the macd it's very likely we do get a move to the upside, but only time will tell. That measured move takes us further to $2.366 trillion, and a lot of money will flow out of Bitcoin into the altcoins, and then the altcoins will start to pull more money, and there's, there's just a frenzy coming. However, I'm a support and resistance guy. If we can't get above this resistance, we would have to expect more downside. So I need a five-day five, five day candle to close above $1.77 trillion. That's the main thing I'll be watching, the five-day candle closing above $1.77 trillion. Other than that, um, we don't do that. We're going to start making an M pattern and break down. We do that, we're on our way further up to the $2.36 billion, trillion. And that's awesome, right? Getting into the $2 trillion level. This is the total market cap for all the altcoins. Still got to move. Not as big, but still got to move, right? Because it was mainly a Bitcoin move. However, altcoins still fall. You had some pumps around the board, and it was still a pretty big night, big pump. And altcoins in general have been moving. TIA got to move from 16 to 21, right? Um, a lot of coin, yeah, just like, that's like a head altcoin, you know, the leader of the altcoin. Solana looking pretty nice. And look, a shoulder, a head, a shoulder, shoulder, right? It is the inverted head and shoulder. We broke to the upside. Let's take a look at the key levels to watch on the weekly, get rid of those moving averages and see what's happening for the altcoins. So the altcoins, boom. One thing we talked about the altcoins, right? Was the five day. I do want to see the 200, the five day. Once we get above the five day 200 SMA, the altcoins are going to rip. Absolutely rip and i did say rip with a pop because they're going to fly and they're going to fly pretty fast right up to 600 uh and 40 40 650 640 yeah 650 trillion dollars they're on their way um you can see this beautiful flag there's a chance it kind of maybe we make a small there's a chance we kind of maybe pull back a little bit and we consolidate it'd be nice if we continue up and then we consolidate up here so right now we're being roofed right by the 200 sma as you can see we're being roofed by it we need to break back above that to remain bullish. I'll tell you what, the second this candle closes above the five-day chart, it's going to be on like Donkey Kong. The altcoins will absolutely explode. The last time we closed one five-day candle above the 200, it was the beginning of alt season. 
We never looked back. It was July of 2020. The halving had already happened, though, right? And then we were gone. So could we get a little bit of pullback, get the halving, and then have this get above the 200 SMA and go? It could happen. But I'm looking at the altcoins just looking super bullish. You know, the bear scenario is we could get a pullback here, come all the way back down and go up and down. Pants, Bitcoin continues to pump. Maybe people sell some altcoins into Bitcoin or Bitcoin gets a pullback and, you know, some of the altcoins pull back. But as long as we stay above $426 billion, and right now we're tapping at the door at that half a trillion level, we're on our way. The measured move for this when we get our next leg to the upside is going to be a blast out of this flag if it's not a blast earlier. And I see us getting to $730 trillion. Uh, billion dollars, right? On our way to a trillion. I can't wait till the altcoins come back and become a whole trillion. This is total three, the market cap of all the altcoins, excluding Bitcoin and Ethereum. And so that's what, you know, I'm bullish on the altcoins. They look great. Nothing really to see here. We might get a little pullback, so don't get too stressed. And it could be pretty significant because it'll be 500 to four, you know, five, it'll be like a 10%, 20% pullback. But, you know, it's, it's likely we probably make more of a flag like such. And we respect the trend line and we just get tighter and tighter until we break out to the upside. I could not wait for a five-day candle to close on total three above the 200 SMA. That's going to be a very, 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 very big macro sign for me. I'm going to be, I'm going to celebrate. That's, that's when we know altcoin season begins. So we know when altcoin season is going to begin. I'm going to be able to tell you using my five-day chart and the 200 SMA. It's very, very simple. Okay. Here's the dollar index. We didn't want this to pump today. We want this to struggle it looks, uh, you know, a little bit overbought, oversold. Looks like it could get more legs to the downside on that daily. The four-hour ha- is roofing down. We want it to just double top and really break to the downside. We do not want to see the DXY pop like Monday morning, you know. We don't want to see that. We want to see this continue to go down. Right now, the one-hour suggests that it would get a move to the upside. So get rid of the moving average for a second. It's looking like the dollar index could just make a move out of this to the upside. What do we want to see? Well, we're looking at the macro. And the macro, I'm showing you this beautiful shoulder Head, right shoulder, right? You want me to draw it out just because it feels nice. But there's a shoulder, a head, and a possible right shoulder that will break further to the downside. We don't want to see the dollar getting back above 104.96. We want to see this rising wedge break down, retest. We want this biggest, bigger uh, symmetrical triangle or kind of wedge to break to the downside. So this starts to break up. There could be a pullback for Bitcoin. It could change the story. We want this to follow suit and continue to dump. So we're going to be tracking this. We want this right shoulder Next week, we want to see that we're like almost over here and the right shoulder is more forming when I come back for this macro analysis. Bitcoin dominance, we put it in this flag. We said how this was kind of a W. I even made this little flag and it looked like we could continue to the upside. On the second, I started looking at it like, hey, could we stay here and bounce? And Bitcoin dominance, it, it, you know, it did make a big move. And, you know, Bitcoin dominance was telling us that a move was coming. Kept looking at it on the, on the bigger charts. Even like, look, the three-day chart was oversold and pushing to the upside and looked really good. What do we see for it? It just says it could come up a little more. I wouldn't be surprised if Bitcoin does pump and then kind of start going sideways and then money flows back into the altcoins. But a little more pump for Bitcoin is expected. Uh, that's what dominance is showing. There's still more love in the three-day for more movement to the upside. Then we start to come down and we'd like to see this consolidate, right? If we did something like this, this would be, re- this would be alt season, all right? We really want Bitcoin dominance to bleed out. That's how we, you know, as long as the tether dominance... We want Bitcoin dominance and Tether dominance to bleed out together. And right now, you know, you're a bit overbought. Let's take a look here. You're a bit over, you know, you're kind of, you're getting there on the Stochastics R side, but you have some legs to go on. You're getting a little overbought on the daily, but it suggests that you could get one more big push up too as well. All right. So Bitcoin dominance, I feel like it's, it's you know, getting towards the end of its run, but still has a little more to go before we really get that money flowing into the altcoins. You want it, this is altcoin, this is altcoin love. Whenever we get a nice dump here, as long as Tether dominance doesn't dump, it's good for all coins. So Tether dominance. Look at this. You know, this is interesting because now Bitcoin dominance is getting further up on the daily. Tether dominance is getting oversold. So eventually we could get a bit of a pullback here. So it, te- it says, hey, take some profits while you can. This is a really, really green day. There was a lot of money here, but we could get a pullback. The four hour chart on Bitcoin is far away from that 21 day moving average. So it's looking like we'll probably get what's called like a bearish retest, though. I'm not, you know, it doesn't look like we're getting something amazing. But we're looking for a possible maybe daily retest here, and then we continue to drop to the downside. Let's look at our four-hour. Could we make a bit of a flag or something like that? We're still oversold. So we're expecting this to make some type of bear flag and then continue further down. But all is well. Look, we broke out the flag as suggested. This is exactly what we wanted. We lost the 200 SMA on the four-hour time frame. 
So far, everything is going exactly as planned. Shoulder, head, shoulder, and we dump further to the downside. Uh, the tether dominance is continuing to fall. We look at it on the three-day chart, and you can see the three-day chart just has more uh, continuation of a, of a bigger move down. If I get rid of my squiggles from those smaller time frames, and so the three-day chart on the stochastics, they got more room to go. You know, they, they show signs of more life to the downside here. When we really zoom in, you can see it really heading further down. So that we could go even further. I'm looking at it to come down to 5.25 and we'll see what happens from there. But so far, everything we've called out, everything we've showed you each week on the macro analysis is continuing to play out. Uh, as long as we don't get tether dominance back above 650, uh, this thing's going to just continue. If it ever gets above 650, if it ever gets back above 650, then I would, you know, something I would have to think about. But S&P futures, we gave you this cup and handle. We called out the bottom. There was hidden bullish divergence on the three-day chart. I kept telling you they're going to continue to print money. They don't have a choice. Every week I come here telling you it's going to be higher than it was the week before. Every week it's higher than it was the week before. It continues to happen. We broke the all-time highs. I've got a call out for the cup and handle to go higher even. And for this bigger channel with this longer leg out, this tells me we can go all the way to possibly 7000 7500 they're going to print money the entire way. We are up now we're in so much debt is ridiculous. It's starting now. Like the helicopter money, like they can't ever it's to the point hyperinflation is going to I believe start happening at a very fast rate in the next year, year and a half. Uh, the governments have just spent way too much money. Even the Federal Reserve doesn't know what to do. Like they'll never get to 2%. I've told you guys this. I said it every single day. The Federal Reserve will never get to 2% and I'm going to show you why right now. Let's break it down. So, uh S&P is going to continue to pump all right, and if they continue to print money, all assets based on and and you know and, and the dollars are going to go up. Real estate's going to go up. Stocks are going to go up. They don't have a choice. So again, flag this out. It looks like we might go get a sideways week here after this nice pump, and then when I come back on the analysis, it looks like this flag could be ready for another pump to the upside. But I'm still bullish on the S and P. Uh, still looking great and on trajectory further to the upside. I gave you guys this trade. I never deleted it. I still have it here just in case. Right there, it is. Stop loss move to break even. I pulled the Fibonacci. It was a six one eight swing up. The swing up was a swing down on the three day chart. I used my signature three day cup and handle, and bang, what a beautiful move to the upside for gains when it comes to the S and P. Again, there's a lot on there, so I don't leave that on there a lot. But I drew this, and that's been there ever since I drew it. Um, set in stone. I called this S and P move. You'd be in massive gains if you decided to kind of go into tech stocks at that point. Um, again, and I'm not a financial advisor. And I think I say Andy should be taking his financial advice, but I've been spot on with these charts when it comes to the S&P. Anything with the chart, you name it, we've been spot on. Let's take a look at the NASDAQ. It was also in a Sammy Cup and Handy. I'm known around the world as Sammy Cup and Handy. That's my nickname as a trader. There's your cup. There's your handle to the upside. We talked about this break into the upside. We went over it multiple times. Said it was likely going to continue to bang, bang, ba-boom, boom, boom. So, now what? Where are we? Well, we've been looking at this smaller time frame flag here as an inverted head and shoulder that's likely to break to the upside. What happened? It broke to the upside. Where's my target? 1840, all-time highs, even further. I called the break of the all-time highs. We could see it. You could see it right here. So S&P looks like it wants to go further to the upside. I'm going to zoom out now and look at everything on the weekly. All right. And you can see it clearly just doing damage. There's your cup and handle. Same thing. I called, you know, the S&P, calling the S&P and the NASDAQ are the exact same thing. They're, bro they're twins, right? They do the, you know, but this is the swing up there. This is the swing down. That's hidden bullish divergence. That's where you buy in with the Fibonacci retracement and boom, you're gone to the upside, right? Here's your cup and handle that broke on out. I claimed that this flag was going to continue out of the cup and handle. I drew the cup and handle. They call me Sammy Cup and Handy. You've heard the story already, right? You get it. So, and we get a massive move to the upside. This has a continuation move, right? Cup and handles like to go from the wick of the top of the handle to the wick inside the middle of the bowl. And this says that we go higher somewhere up to about, what, $21,000, you know, by July of 2024, even mile. I mean, so all-time highs, they're going to print money. The stocks are going to go out of control. Uh, things are going to get crazy. I think gold's going to go up in value. We're going to, this is showing hyperinflation. The chart itself is, because if this can move that fast, that quickly, they are printing money beyond belief. They don't know what to do. You know, they got too many issues all around the world and they're just forking money off, off every single thing they can. Every bill they pass is another thing of more money, more money, more money. It just, you can't keep, you can't print money to zero. 
I know everyone thinks that's the plot, you know, and the Federal Reserve doesn't care. They'll keep printing it because there's greedy people in the end that get a VIG and they want their money. They want, they want, they love it. They love us when we do this. So you got this rising wedge. Rising wedges break out parabolically. This looks like they're going to print even more money. This should break down, but it's looking crazy. Your conservative measured move is just this line here. All right. So I'm looking for the NASDAQ to continue to move. Uh, basically, when I come back here next week, pump, 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 it looks like we're going to be somewhere here and maybe going sideways in a flag, but we will have broken out to the upside. Uh, maybe come down and consolidate a little bit and then begin to pump, but I, I still see a continuation. You have an SR flip right here. You got back above 17,182, and you're in price discovery at this point. So, uh, you know, this thing could really just begin to rally into some major, major highs. I'm looking for the first stop at 19,582, right? Yeah, and so I'm bullish. Here's our mystery surprise chart coming for you. It is Solana BTC. Solana BTC on the dailies, very oversold, getting tight. Look at that. This thing looks like it's about to rip to the upside on some on a major, major move. So Solana BTC looks very, very nice to me. Uh, this is something that looks pretty, pretty amazing. So Solana BTC on the radar. Uh, definitely pay attention to Solana BTC, that looks like it's about to blast on the daily chart. Everybody, that is my weekly macro analysis. Congratulations if you got in when we did and were able to ride Bitcoin to the upside from these low prices at about 43000 all the way up to 48000 It was a beautiful $5,000 move. Uh, we caught it, and we gave you guys multiple ways to get in along the way in case you missed it. I gave multiple calls to my trading group. I was there along the way. I love you. I appreciate you. And if you came to my channel, then you're already doing the right thing. Please comment, like, and subscribe. Hit the bell for notifications. You can find out when I post my next video. And remember, if you came to the channel, then you're already doing the right thing. Crypto is life.